Hey, fishy folks, and happy Water Change Wednesday to you. Guys, I just want to take a minute to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas. And uh, if you didn't celebrate Christmas yesterday, it's no big deal. I hope you enjoyed your Chinese food and movie. Uh, me personally, I had about 10 people over for dinner. Um, we had a great time, although uh, I was under the weather. I haven't uh, been able to keep anything down since Monday, so I didn't eat. I did make this kick-ass prime rib. Boy, did it look good. It came out perfect, but I didn't need any. Anyway, in today's video, I want to talk a little bit about Betta Bowl Care. Now, I have one, and uh, a lot of people don't like it, and I don't really care, but whatever. Uh, but before I do that, I just want to send a big shout out to my boy Scott and his girl Liz from King and Queen Cichlids. Uh, Scott and I are pretty tight, as you know, and um, he has a smaller YouTube channel that is really a great channel. He has great content. He edits great. Um, not too bad to look at. I mean, Liz is much better to look at, but you know what I mean. Anyway, Scott uh, had a goal of reaching 1,500 subscribers by the end of 2018, and uh, when we were talking about it, uh, he had about 100 subs to go. We had about... Um, three weeks and I'm like yeah that's that's easy let's do let's push for 1500 subscribers by Christmas and uh, he did a great job producing videos and promoting himself and I might have mentioned his name once or twice to help him out but I'm happy to say on December 24th at about 6 p.m. he had uh, broke through the 1500 subscriber plateau so Scott and Liz congratulations very proud of you all right, go get a snack and a beverage. I'm going to set up uh, my stuff over here, and then we're going to show you a little bit about Betta Bowl Care. Stand by. All right, fishy folks, I have my little Betta Bowl here, and I just want to show you. It's pretty dirty on the bottom. There's a lot of detritus. I know you guys are saying, oh, my God, that's terrible. How do you live with yourself? The bed is fine. Also, there's been evaporation. Now, there's evaporation um, a lot. And I just, I keep filling it just up until the top, enough so that the bed can reach and get some air. But, um, I mean, it is what it is, right? So this particular bed of bowl I got at uh, the Aquatic Experience in the auction. And I purposely put money in it in the auction or tickets in the auction to win it so I could do a video. 100% transparent. I wanted to do a video because I think... I think it's like 32 ounces. It's not even a gallon. And I wanted to prove to people that you could certainly keep a bed in a small container like this if done properly. Now, I've let this one get really bad. There shouldn't be that much detritus on the bottom of the, of the bowl. But I have uh, this pothos plant, which as you can see, I don't want to take out because I don't want to break the roots. But you can see it's putting off runners here, which is sucking up the nitrates. It's got new leaves here, here, and here, so it's growing well. It's doing its job cleaning the water. We're just going to put it off to the side for now. I'm going to take the bed out, show you how to do a bed bowl water change. We're going to take the bed out. This is Luke's. He got it at the Keystone Clash. It was given to him. Uh, he would like to put it in either his 10-gallon tank with the black uh, phantom tetras or the 55 that's in his room. Both of them are empty right now. As soon as he gets his room straightened out, I'll, I'll put some fish in there, but that's a dad thing. Anyway, you can see the bed of bowl. Let me change the water. Done. Now he had some new water. Now, as you know, this is part of my auto water change system, so it is treated. It is temperature controlled. There we go. New water. Now I'm just going to go ahead and put this in to make sure he can still breathe. He can. So now I will actually pour a little water out and do this the smart way. Pour him in. Oh my God, he tumbled in the tank. <gasps> He's fine, trust me. Boom, Betta Bowl Water Change 101 complete. And that's All right, fishy folks, the keys to having a successful Betta Bowl are don't overfeed, make sure you do your regular water changes and top offs. And regular might be once every three or four days, not 
you know, once a week or once every two weeks, but you might have to do them very often. And finally, uh, live plants to help suck up the nitrates. Those are my tips. That's what I do to have a successful betta bowl. Now, I don't think it's the greatest thing for a betta to be in one, but it can be done. If, if you want a betta in your life, the only thing you can afford is a small bowl, 32 ounces or a gallon. It can be done. It just takes some work. All right, fishy folks, hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't done so already, smash that uh, subscription button and uh, have a great day. All right, fishy folks, so just to recap, the keys to having a successful betta bowl are don't overfeed, make sure you keep up on your maintenance, including water changes and top offs. Have some something, has to have fafa. All right, fishy folks, the keys to having a successful. <clears throat> Do I sound funny? All right, fishy folks, the keys to having a successful. So, wow. All right, fishy folks, the keys to having a successful. Hi, fishy folks, and happy water change Wednesday to you. Today.